Hello. Um, I'm going to start this over again. A uh, little behind the scenes on this. I did one video already and it's like 42 minutes. So maybe I'll put the long version on here. But um, I wanted to keep it short. Try wanted to really keep it down to 10 minutes. So we're going to try that this time. A um, little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I haven't done videos in like four years. What it really comes down to is uh, we had my daughter and I was working two jobs and Quite frankly, I just did not have time to sit down and both do music and also um, do videos like I normally would. So I've done stuff for Blamsoft, but um, he has not put out anything. Well, no, he has put stuff out recently. He's put out the uh, mid-side EQs, um, which are amazing, and you should definitely try them out. Uh, they compare very well with some of the other mid-side EQs available, whether that's from uh, Guasa or even from um, Native Instruments. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, what it really comes down to is uh, I haven't done a video in a long time because I've been busy. And I came across a post from a user on the Propellerhead Users Forum on Facebook. Um, and there's a group there and somebody asked, they said, is it just me or is the ADSR on Expanse confusing? And it can be a little bit because it can be complicated if you want to. So I'm just going to run through this. Now, I could just as easily point you to the manual, which actually does a pretty good job of explaining everything. Um, but I'm just going to knock this out real fast because I want to show you how powerful this thing can be. So let's start off. Uh, we're going to change this wavetable to Exodes PWM1. Um, nice little simple. That's just middle C. But nice simple sound. Now, first thing you're going to need to understand, T1, T2, T3, and T4. Um, now, that stands for what would normally be attack, decay, sustain, release. Um, now, one thing that I would keep in mind is you can move all these things around, um, as usual, with the dots. Um, and then you'll see your time at the top uh, in milliseconds and then the level that you're at. So, going up to 10, starting off at 0. Um, so, you have that. Along with that, you also can drag with the numbers themselves so you don't have to actually mess up the level so you can keep it very um, much the same as what you're used to with working with other synths because normally it's just a very simple slider um, along with that you can get more complicated by changing the mode so the mode changes it into a one shot um, so it has no sustain um, you can just turn sustain off altogether um, you can turn it into an editor which makes it so you can actually drop points in and you can have multiple points and get really weird with it. Of course, with all of these, you can also change the curve of all this. Um, the basic idea is here that you can um, use, because there are these five envelopes and you would normally want to use mod one, mod two, and mod three. And then you would mess with those because you can actually change envelopes for one, two, or yeah, you can even do uh, the amp envelopes as wavetables. So that's what that wavetable looks like. And you can change it around in here. That's showing both one and two. Make sure that try to be easier to see. But just on envelope one. I guess it always combines the two. Okay, so it combines those two uh, because it needs to be able to transition from one to the other. Um, but that's what that's doing. So you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, and the other things you'll need to know, of course, are your key commands. So hitting the key command and then clicking, like any other thing in Reason, will reset to a default position. Um, along with that, to get back to what you were really doing before, you can Hold down Option or Alt and click, and then you can release. And then it'll pull up a menu so you can reset the envelope altogether or copy or paste um, or copy or paste the editor because technically it's a separate um, window. So you have all that. So let's reset these. And all right. So next, uh, I'm just going to show you some of the other things. So units. Um, that is basically, you can change it from milliseconds to beat divisions. Um, now you can do it from one fourth, you can drop it down, make it shorter to zero, or you can go super long and then 
it controls uh, on the beat, so you can stay on beat. Um, this is very useful for um, electronic style music, hip hop, whatever, honestly. It just depends on how you want to use it. So that's what B Divisions does. Um, let's reset again. And then looping. So you can loop it with a key reset. So it resets after every key. Um, so each key gets its own amp, basically. Um, or you can do LFO based or attack loop release. Or you can even do on beat. So you can have it just repeat every one eighth. Um, so can be very simple, but can also be very complicated if you want. Uh, this is very helpful to have in beat divisions um, when you're doing it like that. Along with that, you also have scale. So you can control. Um, this would be very helpful if you're doing something that is more, um, if you want it to sound kind of uh, uh, string based. So plucking, if you want to kind of add that breath, you can add the mod wheel or velocity or aftertouch. All of these things can affect the scale of um, how hard you're hitting the keys um, and the sound itself. Um, so Mod Wheel allows you to control the scale like that. You can also control how much scale it's going to actually control. So maybe it only controls 48% and so on and so forth. So very simple, but also very complex. So that's just controlling the sound with amplitude coming out. Um, now where it gets interesting, and this is the part where I will always tell you, if you're starting to learn how to use synthesis, you need to understand that using sources and destinations or controlling with a mod matrix is extremely important to get full control over what you're trying to make. So I heavily, uh, I heavily impress that you should try to use that as much as you can to get to where you're trying to go, especially when making things more dynamic or evolving the sound itself. So, I mean, this with a simple middle C. But then, let's say we want to control it with the LFO, because that's the regular way you would do these things. So, here's our LFO. It is a sine wave. Um, I'm going to assign it to 404. And then, clicking on the arrow, dragging to the what you want to control, in this case, the position, and then changing this knob. So, what the destination gets as far as, like, the amount. Now, right now, it's just going straight up, and it's not unipolar. So if I were to move this position right about here, uh, it's going to be moving up, but also coming down a little bit. So it gives you a little more power. Um, so you can do a lot of things with that. Um, along with that, maybe I want to control the uh, randomness of it. Or here, let's say noise amount. That doesn't even sound as interesting. Let's do blend and let's do that. Let's start here and then blend it up a little bit more. So middle C. Or you know what? Let's go in the opposite direction. So you can do stuff like that. Um, along with being able to do those things, um, what's very interesting is how you can control um, the filters, because the filters are always starting off as on, so this is always on and working, and it is pulling off of this envelope. But then, because you are able to choose basic presets, so like a sine wave, um, you can also use that in order to control how the filter works. But you can do it on slightly different time divisions, with different scaling, and you don't have to take over your LFOs. But along with that, because you can use the mod matrix and you can use multiple things, you can have a lot of different things being fully controlled. You can fill out this mod matrix and control a lot of different sounds uh, or parts of the sound with that. Um, so you have all those things. You can even make very 
syncopated stuff. So let's say we'll do a complex pattern. Let's see what that one sounds like. <laughs> So you can do things like that, and I believe this should also work. Let's find out. Um, so let's say we wanted to use envelope. We'll do mod one, and we'll also use this to control uh, the mix on the distortion. So let's say we wanted to kick up at the each one of these peaks. <laughs> That's that's one oscillator. So you can do very complex things like that. Um, it's extremely powerful. I highly encourage you to use it. Um, Expanse is right up there with Serum. It's a wavetable synthesizer, so it can do a lot of different things, and it can do it with um, varying degrees of power, um, basically depending on what you want to put into it. So, I mean, you can start off with this. <laughs> But I mean, we're just using one distortion. We're barely using one oscillator. You can do other things on top of that. We also have the harmonics that we can mess with. We can add modulation and change up the way this works. And like, there, there's a lot you can do here. Um, the envelopes are the way that you control those things though. So if you want envelopes to control how the gate works, starting off with um, something more, more simple, just like a regular ADSR, or if you want it to be in a full editor and you're doing wavetable stuff um but yeah um that's how it works uh, if you have any questions let me know write it in the comments down below that's everything i have right now i have more videos planned out so i will be seeing you guys later